Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto and bringing out a bite-sized piece. So today, quite an interesting day in the crypto market. And the real question is, why is there such a pullback in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? So we're going to talk about five different reasons, everything from maybe September is just a bear month. Maybe it's people taking profits and other things. Also, there could be a connection between the El Salvador government making Bitcoin legal tender and also a little liquidation and panic selling and just basic, all in all, good old fashioned manipulation. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with a little bit of good news. So before we get into all that, let's just take a look at what the heck is going on with the market. So today, as you may have uh, guessed already, we're looking at a market cap of down a little bit of about 11% at 2.08 trillion. And let me just take you back down memory lane and remember when we were at like 1.3 trillion just a couple of months ago, 1.2 trillion, and all of a sudden at 1.7, 1.8, 2 trillion, 2.2, 3, and 4. And now everybody's crying about a 2.08 trillion market cap. Look, uh, it is what it is. It's very volatile, and that is what we're all into. And I'm going to talk today about why this actually happened and some good news on the horizon. So just stick with me. Anyhow, Bitcoin price is around 46,807, and uh, which was down from, I think, around 50K, 51K, somewhere around there. But this is the big thing. And we're using Trade the Chain, which is sentiment analysis, which does all the scraping of all the different websites and, uh, and a direct API integration into Twitter and everything else, and disseminates all this information, gives us a sentiment score. And what we're looking at right now is an average daily sentiment of 42 over 100, which is what it's been for like the last two or three weeks. But I want you to notice something. And this is what makes there's a big disconnect here between what is happening and the sentiment going forward. The Bitcoin daily sentiment is 81 over 100. And again, if you're looking to, to use Trade the Chain, there's a link in the description looks just like this. Just click on there and you can check it all out. So when we talk about this daily sentiment, look at this, this chart, sentiment analysis. And you can see the price is in blue here. And then the green is the daily sentiment. And you can just see over a day, even over seven days, uh, the sentiment uh, is still rising as things are going down. What the heck is going on? Well, really what it comes down to is that people believe that this isn't the right price. And there's a lot of people out there that not only feel it, but know it and understand it, that this price is not correct. And uh, that's the whole beauty of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So let's just break into it huh? and just talk about what is going on and why this all happened. So first up, we're going to talk about just really quickly. Uh, we did a video a couple of days ago. Didn't wasn't very popular. <laughs> And every time, I, every time I talk about something that's negative, it doesn't get real a bunch of popularity. And I talk about, hey, I'd, hey, September could potentially be a pretty bearish month. And, and uh, in the past, statistically, historically, uh, that's exactly what we've seen. And we took a look at just the, uh, the monthly uh, candles as far as what is going on as far as in September. If we look all the way back here, and uh, let me blow this up so you can see what I see. So if we go all the way back to uh, September in a very bullish year which was 2017, uh, it was actually a, a bearish month. But then look what happened. Green candle, monthly green candle, monthly green candle, and a wick all the way up to almost $20,000, 2017. Now, 2018, we also had a pretty darn bullish month in 2018, but it was, it was, a, it was a bearish, excuse me, a bearish year because that was crypto winter. And then we kind of flipped a little bit in 2019 where we saw it uh, go a little bit, in the red and then green, red, red, green, kind of like not making its mind up. Then all of a sudden in 2020, uh, we had a green candle in July, green candle in August, then another red candle in September of 2020. And then all of a sudden, bloom off the races and the same thing's happening again. And we're seeing that. So that is just one little piece of, of the puzzle. And we take a look at here and we see that, yes, uh, there is, it was going along pretty well. And then this big, huge, uh, red candle for the hourly and all of a sudden, boom, and then red again and wicked all the way down. Gosh, that was pretty low. And then it just rebounded pretty well. And then green candle, a little red next hour, green and red. As we flip flop back and forth, not a big deal. And then real quick, let me just take up and see where all the coins are and what is actually doing uh, pretty well. So Ethereum's down at 3,400, Cardano's 240. In the last 24 hours, looking at 15% for Cardano, 12% for Ethereum. Everything's down except for Solana, just crushing at 8%, not uh, really caring what the heck is going on. Baller. And then everything else is just down around the board. So that's essentially what we're looking at. Maybe September is just one of those months 
what's going on, but I don't believe that's what happened. And that leads me to my next point. Uh, so I put it out on Twitter and I said, you know what? Maybe it's just a big profit taking day. And I put this out in the very early morning before all this uh, massacre or reds, red zone had uh, popped up. I said, look, brace yourself. Uh, everybody's taking profits. September is one of those months. And then people in mass said, no, this is not right. This is not just people just taking profits and we're down two, three, five percent. We're down big time. Supernova says, and he just, he gave a very good uh, chart. Like, look at this. This isn't taking profits. That's not what we're talking about. And then people talked about, could be a coincidence, El Salvador, time to tax harvest. They're trying to crash everything out. And then this isn't taking profits. This could be panic selling. Not a good, good month for leverage positions. Everything started to come, come about. I'm like, yeah, that all makes sense. So could it be just one thing? I don't think it is. But I think that there is a, a, a main indicator as far as what's going on, which leads me to my next point, El Salvador. So in here, this, let me blow this up again. This is, uh, I'm going to always butcher his name, Ayib Bukele. I think it's how I say it. He's the president of El Salvador. And today is the first day that they're going to allow Bitcoin as legal tender. And uh, on this day, and he went to uh, the IMF and said, hey, I need you to help, help us out. Like, nope, this is a bad policy. We're not going to help you. World Bank, can you help us? No, this is bad policy. And we've got a lot of connections. We want to do it. We don't think this is wise and we're just going to sit on the sidelines. I don't think they really sat on the sidelines too much. And the president of El Salvador comes out and he goes, look, let me blow this back up again. We're buying the dip. This was four hours ago. We're buying the dip. 150 new coins are added. And then he goes on to say this. This is pretty funny. It appears the discount is ending. Sad face. Thanks for the dip at IMF. We saved a million dollars in printed paper. El Salvador now owns 550, not 400 Bitcoin. Now we own 550 and we'll probably buy some more. So look, if the president of El Salvador comes out and is like, look, we don't know what happened here, but uh, it could be this or this. If the president of a country goes, you know, something doesn't seem right. And he says something, maybe just something to uh, consider. So that could be uh, another reason. And then on top of that, there was also this little nice little uh, snippet where I said, uh, this is from Alistair Milne. He says, Bitfinex, and I, how do I say his name? Bitfinex is down due to a huge DDoS on their services. So there's uh, orchestrated attacks that are going on for all these exchanges. So even though the price is dropping, you really can't get in and save yourself because all these exchanges are being attacked for some reason and people can't get on. What's going on? So it's like you're getting hit from all different sides. Is this normal? Is this just people just taking massive profits and little stuff? No, probably a part of it, but not a big thing. But if you add up all these little pieces, it's looking a little scary about what's going on. Not scary, I shouldn't say that. I should just say it's looking very transparent about what is going on. So we have those types of things. And then we also have something that looks like this. Flash crashes, profit taking, liquidations, panic selling. It all adds up to a loss overall. The cruel question is, what are you doing about it? And this is from uh, friends of the show, CJ, CJ Reichel. And he says, this is total liquidations. And right now it was over a billion dollars in long liquidations. People doing leverage trades and just thinking that they can uh, beat the market. And they went a little bit too long. I don't know why you'd go long in September. I think it's kind of like up in the air. I don't think it really work. But uh, a lot of people got liquidated. And, uh, you know, since the uh, exchanges were down, it's kind of hard to do some stop losses and all those things. Maybe they worked out, maybe they didn't. But a lot of people lost a lot of money. So this just kind of pushes people to this like, oh, cryptocurrency is just off and whatever else. It's not cryptocurrency. It's not digital assets. It's people behind the curtain pulling little strings, doing whatever they want to do because of what is going on. Now, I'm not saying that that is what it is. I think it's a combination of everything. I think you've got September just being a, uh, a red month, potentially. I think you got people taking profits, probably. I think you got people going just panic selling, go, holy smokes, what the heck happened over there? I got to sell. Definitely. And then I think you got uh, these attacks against the exchanges going back and forth. And here we have, and then people get liquidated. And then guess what? All the different uh, bots on uh, the exchanges that uh, follow Bitcoin, well, now they have to sell because everything is going down. Before you know it, it's a cascade effect. And here we are. So it really doesn't take a lot to sway this market in any way, shape, or form, which is why I'm not a big fan of trading. I'm not a big fan of doing a bunch of things. I'm just a fan of uh, dollar cost averaging and just being an investor and just sitting back going, you know what? 
If it is what it is. And if it goes down, well, I have my points where I think I should actually buy back into. And that's pretty much where we go to it from that. On top of this, I will say this. People were complaining about uh, um, Voyager, the Voyager app going, ah, Voyager's down again, even though it connect, it's a brokerage that connects a bunch of exchanges. But what I did was I just updated the app in the, in the uh, app store and it worked just fine. So if you were having problems with Voyager to get in, just update your app. Uh, they had a, they just push a new update to it and it works just fine. Uh, on, as far, as far as like the other ones, uh, what are we at? Uh, Bitfinex and some other ones, I think Coinbase went down. Shocker. Um, Hey, it is what it is. And that's how it goes. So that is the bad news. And I will, I will leave it up to that for you to decide what you think it is, but these are all the things that could potentially be, do you panic? Do you look at it and go, Oh my God, I got to get out. No. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second, but uh, CJ there. Uh, first of all, thanks CJ for uh, spelling out the liquidations. I'm going to be on uh, CJ, Monty, and uh, uh, John Najarian show, uh, The Daily Crypto Bite, tomorrow. And the reason why I wanted to go on there so much so was because uh, it's not just the TA. I'm not a big TA guy, but I like to, to watch and, and see what's going on. It's about John, because I believe there's a little bit of manipulation going on. And John here, you've probably seen him on uh, CNBC, on all the different uh, talks, uh, uh, shows, not talk shows, but uh, different financial shows where he just talks about options and trading and what's going on in the market. Real smart guy, has been around for a very long time, sold one of his companies for like close to a billion dollars. And uh, John knows a lot of these big time players. I'm not saying he knows anybody in IMF or the World Bank, but he knows a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes. And uh, that's why I want to talk to him tomorrow about what he thinks about manipulation. So if you would like to watch that, uh, it's over at uh, uh, Market Rebellion, their channel. And I will link that in the description. Also, just follow me on Twitter. I also tweeted this out. Just set a reminder and I'll be there because I can guarantee uh, all three of these guys know a lot of it what's about what's going on now, what's going to happen pretty soon, and potentially what to do. And nobody has a crystal ball, but it's great to get the most information from everywhere. So definitely check that out. Uh, tomorrow. So that is essentially liquidation, panic selling, a little bit of good news. And there's a little, a couple more things I want to talk about, which was this. First of all, thank God for Solana and Send Token. Uh, my portfolio has been buoyed by both of these. Now, Sentiment Token, you have to understand, I'm super biased in everything I talk about here because I own it, I own a lot of it. So uh, Sent and Solana, yes, they did pretty darn good in the last 24 hours. Uh, take a look at those. And then also, there was a little snippet about seven places that uh, want to want you to spend your virtual currency. So when we take a look at these little price actions, like in the grand scheme of things, who really cares? Look at, I mean, besides the El Salvador, what's going on there? Look in Switzerland, uh, in September, they were the, uh, Zug was the first in Switzerland to take tax payments in crypto, saying would accept Bitcoin and Ether from 2021. Also in Miami, I mean, Mayor Suarez, he's uh, big into crypto and is also doing a Miami coin. And he's also doing a lot of things for to help uh, to pay workers uh, for in, in cryptocurrency. Then in Canada, the town in Innisfil, north of Toronto, became the first Canadian municipality to accept Bitcoin as a method of payment for property taxes in 2019. If they held on to it, I can only imagine just how much they've actually gained just holding on to Bitcoin since 2019. I can tell you it's a pretty good amount. In the Bahamas, they had uh, this one thing called a sand dollar, a CBDC. China really doesn't count, but they are doing the CBDC, so I suppose. And then in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, each week, everybody's issued a virtual voucher with 400 Kenyan shillings. They can use to buy goods underpinned by a blockchain-based currency on top of all the hedge funds and all the regular banks, on top of like shop.com, on top of PayPal, who's going to actually use cryptocurrencies for uh, all their merchants who can spend it. So there's a lot of good things going on in the crypto universe. And just remember this, and this is the last thing I want to talk about. When in doubt, zoom out. And it's the basic thing that I, I stole from Diddy from the Bitcoin family. Go check out his, uh, his YouTube channel. But he says, look, Rob, he goes, if you're, if you're stressed out, just, just zoom out, right? So this is what's going on right now. Oh my God, and it goes down. And it goes up and down and everything else, right? That's in 24 hours. Let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, seven days. Looks pretty good. Still got that blip right there. But now let's take a look at a year. Just zoom out. Look, a year ago, oh, that's crazy. $10,000. I had to really look at that. I'm like, what? $10,000? Yeah, 10,000 bucks on uh, September 2020. So just remember that. And then we had this big, big uh, spike, then down, then up again. And this little tiny spike or this little drop 
That's what we're going through. Now let's take a look at the max. Look at this. Let's just go over here. When Bitcoin was a, a whopping 1200 bucks in March of 2017. And then this was this huge run up when I got in and man, we're really excited. And then everything went down and now we're all the way up here and down a little bit and then back up. And then again, this little tiny piece, which I can't even show you because it's so small. That is what we're dealing with. And that is what is going on. And that is why there's no need to really worry. When in doubt, zoom out. So look, that's it for today. So uh, hopefully that eased some of the, some of the fears and the, and the tensions. This is not financial advice, it's just a financial opinion. I can tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna hold on and uh, keep buying. Hopefully it goes lower, but I, who knows? It might go lower, it might not. I can really care less. And that's really it for today. So thanks for watching all the way in. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. That's all for today. And I'll see you in the next one.